Hello and welcome. Uh, we are continuing with our history in Form 1 and the, this part now we are going to continue with the origins, the origins of people. Remember last time we just started looking at the time, how time is measured in history. So this part is that wonderful part where we are going to look at the origins of people in history. What do we say about it? So in this part we are going to look at the theories, uh, different theories about the origins of people like uh, the theory or uh, the biblical theory that is uh, the creation theory and uh, the evolution theory. Then from there we're going to look at the stages in human development uh, whereby we're going to look at different things starting from the hominids then we're going to look at uh, a number of aspects as humans we are developing. So uh, let's be together in this topic. It's really a very, very good topic. So the other part that we are going to look at is now the origins of people. So this one is a very, very important part. We need to understand this part. Uh, it is the part where uh, some people, they hate history as well to say, oh, uh, history, uh, it, is, it doesn't make sense. Uh, they are talking of the things that are not there. No, it's good for us to know. It's good uh, to know and, uh, and expand our knowledge. And the, this part is a very, very interesting part that you are going to enjoy so much. You are going to enjoy so much. So origins of people. Now, is it by creation or evolution? So there are these two things uh, that we are going to talk about. You know these things. So the origin of, of people has been the subject of great interest since 1859. So until 18 or the 1800s, most people, they believed in the creation theory. So what do you believe yourself? Evolution or creation? But we are saying that most of the people uh, until 1800s, they believed that people were created. But in here, we are going to look at another, another theory on the origins of people. So uh, let's start with the creation theory. Uh, what you and me believe. You and me, we believe in the creation uh, story again. So the creation uh, is the belief that human beings and the universe were created by one or more supernatural, uh, human, uh, supernatural beings. So there's that belief. Whether you're a Christian, a Hindu, uh, a Muslim, a Confucianist, a uh, and also a Confucianist and who, whatever religion you are. Behind that, the ultimate belief to that is that there is a supernatural being that is the creator who created everything, including human beings. So many cultures all over the world, they have their own version of the creation, uh, the creation story to say of uh, how things were created. So we are saying here that if you are a Christian, a Christian, you believe uh, that there is a God uh, who created it. The Hindu, they also have their own creation story to say there's someone who created it. Each and every religion, they have their own uh, version of how uh, people or the world came into existence. So most known creation story, however, is found in the Bible on the book of Genesis. So in the book of Genesis, we find, uh, we read that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and later on, he created a man uh, like that. So we find the creation story in the Bible there. So most Christians, Muslims, they believe in the same story of creation. But other religions, they have their own, uh, they have their own creation stories. So, 
it states or the creation uh, uh, according to Genesis states that God created the universe uh, and the first two human beings. Who are they or who are they? Adam and Eve. So we read that story in uh, the book of Genesis. So the two were ordered to multiply and fill the earth according to that Genesis story. But until 1850s, creation remained dominant theory uh, on the uh, origins of people. So all this time, up to around 1850s, people, they held that one firmly to say, yes, God created the world. And he, he created, he first created Adam and Eve, and he commanded them to multiply. So, uh, later on, things changed. Now, apart from the creation story, there is the evolution uh, theory. The creation theory is another one of how human beings came into existence. And now let's look at the uh, evolution theory. Now we are going to uh, look at this uh, evolution in this way, like the uh, by or in 1859, Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin was the English scientist. That is, uh, he was from England, a scientist from England. He published his book, which is called uh, The Origins of Sciences. The Origins of Sciences. You can, uh, if you have that chance, you can uh, go to the internet and uh, Google that book. Uh, there is that book. I, I have that book. You can, you can all go to the internet and uh, read that book and see and go through uh, what he read. So he, there is that book, The Origins of Sciences. So according to uh, this theory, the evolution theory advocated by Charles Darwin, human beings developed uh, gradually from the ape-like creatures, ape-like creatures, not apes. Here, that's where we need to understand it. Ape-like, things that we are looking like apes ape-like creatures. So Charles Darwin, he advocated that one to say human beings, they uh, uh, developed gradually, little by little, they changed from things that were uh, looking like the apes. So those ones, they are called the hominids. So they are not apes, but the hominids. So they changed, human beings graduated uh, from there uh, into modern human beings. So as the environment changed, so what were the things that uh, enabled that gradual change? It was the, the change of the environment. Then the hominids, they developed certain features in order to adapt to the change that was happening in order to survive. So for survival, they were adapting to the changes that were uh, uh, coming there. After a long period of time, then you find that those things, they were changing. So the gradual process by which the human-like creatures changed uh, into uh, modern human beings is referred to as evolution. So what is evolution? Evolution is the gradual change. So that is the gradual change, the gradual process uh, of change, whereby the ape-like creatures, they do change into human beings or modern human beings. That one is it, uh, evolution. So we have mentioned of the hominids, the ape-like uh, ape creatures. So let's concentrate on these uh, hominids, the hominids. What were the hominids? So the hominids, uh, they had very small brains. Take note of this. They had very small brains something that has got very small brains they they cannot think properly they cannot uh, their thinking is not uh, complex and uh, they could not stand upright as we do uh, or hold things so they were not standing upright they are walking on four legs and they could not hold things so over a period of time their brains became bigger which gave them the capacity to remember 
many things. So when your brain is big, uh, then you are able to think or remember things and maybe improve some of the things. So as a result, they developed a number of skills. So they started to develop the skills uh, using their hands and making simple tools from sticks as well as bones. So they developed gradually. Uh, they started to develop. Then later on, uh, uh, when their brain was big, then they started to make the simple uh, tools made of sticks and the bones. So it was this ability to use tools that made humans different from other animals. So that ability, when they started that ability, now and again, then they were, it was like at first, uh, those hominids, they were in the group of animals. Then later on, with that use of sticks, bones, and complicated weapons, then they, there was that separation to say, no, they are not in the category of animals. Now they are, they were something else. So they were diverting a little bit from animals until uh, they completely changed into human beings. So the earliest non-human beings to make and use tools lived in Africa. So in Africa, that's where those things, those simple things, they were identified. So the first, uh, uh, those hominids, they are uh, believed to be found in Africa. So this suggests that people originated from Africa. So orig uh, the origin of people is Africa, and later on they spread to other parts of the world. So for this reason, Africa is called the cradle the cradle of mankind or the home of human beings or the home of human beings or the cradle, the cradle or the home, the basis, the origins of humankind. So Africa, uh, we should be proud that the uh, people originated from here and they spread into other parts of the world. So the hominids, we are going to look at a number of them. Number one is the proconsul, the proconsul. So this one uh, is referred to as the first citizen, the first citizen. So this was uh, discovered at Rusinga Island, Rusinga Island on Lake Victoria, on Lake Victoria, Rusinga Island. So it is dated 25 million years ago. 25 million years ago, uh, that's uh, when it was there, it was there, and uh, is the oldest hominid, uh, hominid so far, so uh, scientists have discovered that uh, this one is the oldest, the proconsul, because it was there 25 million years ago, so it's long, 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 very long time. And the second one is the Australopithecus. Can you can you try to, to say that one? Australopithecus. Australopithecus. So that one is uh, referred to as uh, the southern ape. The southern ape. So this one it was a human-like creature, and it was uh, discovered. Uh, at Taung in South Africa, in South Africa uh, in 1926. So it was discovered, the bones of this one were discovered in 1926 by Raymond Dutt. Raymond Dutt, another historian or archaeologist there, he found that one and had a small brain and a skull or scar. So the scar itself, it was uh, very small and the brain also very small. So uh, that one, uh, the Australopithecus, we have to know that one. Its large jaws suggest that it ate vegetables like roots, uh, leaves, and even the fruits. So it was uh, living on roots, leaves, or uh, as well as uh, the fruits because of uh, the appearance of uh, its uh, jaws. The other one is the, the Zinjanthropus. Another ape-like creature was the Zinjanthropus. And this one is referred to as the Eastern Ape. It was discovered in 1959 at Oduvai Gorge in Tanzania. It was 
uh, discovered at Odovai Gorge in Tanzania by Dr. RSB Lige. Dr. RSB Lige found that one. So unlike others, the Zingarthropus, it had heavy legs and hips uh, with long arms and awkward hands, awkward hands. So their hands, they are not just like as we have here. So they were very awkward, uh, uh, but they were very heavy, long arms, very long, the arms themselves, very long. So uh, it had a, a hairy body. So that's what uh, was discovered by Dr. Like at Odovai Gorge. And the other one is the Homo habilis, the Homo habilis. This one is the skilled man. The skilled man. So it was also discovered by Dr. Like at Oduvai Gorge together with the stone tools. The stone tools. Uh, because where they found the bones, they also found the stone tools there. That's why they referred to him as a skilled man, the Homo habilis. So this one had bigger brains than other hominids. So the Homo habilis, it had bigger brain. So you know the effects there. When you have a bigger brain, you are able to remember, you are able to uh, make complex things. And it had a thumb, which suggests that it could hold things. So remember uh, the thumb, this one, it enables us to hold things. Without the thumb, without the thumb, this thumb, we are we cannot hold things properly. We cannot hold things. Then it will be very difficult for us to hold. But this one, it gives support for us to uh, hold things. So we are able to hold things because we have the thumb. So the thumb assists us in that way. So the Homo habilis, it had a thumb. So Homo habilis probably used simple tools because near its bones, they were found uh, the simple stone tools there. And the other one is uh, the Homo erectus, the Homo erectus. This one is referred to as the upright man, the upright man. So this one was the first hominid to walk upright. All the others, the Zingianthropus and the Australopithecus, all others, they were walking on four legs. They had four legs, but this one, he was uh, standing upright and walking upright. That is the Homo erectus. So the Homo erectus had larger brains than the uh, that skilled man, the Homo habilis, uh, which meant that these uh, hominids, they were more intelligent at this stage. So the hominids at this stage, they were very, very much intelligent because we see to it that they had larger brains. And they learned how to use a specialized hand axe and uh, they invented the use of fire. So look at this, the Homo erectus started using fire. So uh, maybe uh, it can be the beginning of uh, maybe eating, uh, maybe meat, they were roasting or whatever like that. And they lived in groups and slept in caves. So uh, we see to it that uh, they started to live in groups while the others, they were finding just alone, not finding also others. While the Homo erectus, they found that there were bones of other Homo erectus, a number of them. So it shows that they were living in groups, in groups. And the other one is the Homo sapiens. The Homo sapiens uh, is uh, referred to as the wise man. And this wise man had features of a modern day person. Uh, features of a modern day person. If you look at yourself, just uh, identify yourself with the Homo sapiens as a wise man, very big brains. So they had larger brains and uh, those brains, they were bigger than the Homo erectus. So uh, your brain and my brain, they are bigger and larger than uh, the Homo erectus that we have for said was the upright man. So having looked at the hominids, it's high time now we looked at, we look at the stages stages in the human evolution now we have known the evolution of people and we have now discovered the hominids all those hominids so it's good that we know which hominid uh, did what so evolution of human beings uh, of human beings 
in terms of physical and cultural uh, aspects. So evolution of human beings, uh, it comes in terms of uh, physical and uh, cultural aspects. So the development of uh, animal, of the animals walking on four legs into a human being using two legs and two hands is uh, referred to as the physical uh, and uh, or is referred to as physical evolution. So when we talk of, of development of human beings uh, that were at first walking on four legs, they were walking on four, but now when they developed now into uh, moving a, in uh, with two uh, legs, that one we call it physical. That one is a physical evolution. So we are saying we are going to look at uh, the evolution of human beings in terms of uh, physical and cultural uh, evolution. So uh, here we are looking at physical, referring to the change, the physical change. So the cultural evolution is the stage during which Homo erectus uh, developed skills necessary for them to adapt uh, to nature and make uh, their environment uh, suitable. So when now they were starting to make uh, the skills, develop the skills by making the tools so that they adjust into the changing environment. That one is referred to as cultural uh, environment. So you have to differentiate between the two. That is the cultural uh, evolution and the physical evolution. So for a long period, human beings used tools to make, uh, uh, they used tools made from uh, the stone. They were using uh, the tools from uh, the stones uh, for quite long period. So this period, it was referred to as the stone age, the stone age. <clears throat> so the tools that were made uh, from, uh, uh, that were also made from the sticks and the bones of, uh, we are saying here that tools were also made during that stone age. They were also made from sticks and, and bones. So during that stone age, they were also making tools from uh, bones of animals. So it was this ability to make and use various tools that uh, distinguished human beings from other animals. So uh, that ability of making tools, that one distinguished or differentiated animals and human beings. So this period was characterized by uh, the use of small and shaped stones, uh, stone blades called uh, the microliths. Microliths, they were the small stones that were uh, shaped into blades for cutting or for digging, things like that. And the cultivation of crops. So they were using uh, those things again, uh, even for the cultivation of crops. So uh, the Stone Age, the Stone Age has been divided into three stages based on the development of people, activities, and the discoveries. So the uh, Stone Age, it has been divided into three uh, uh, divisions or three developments according to uh, the development of people, the activities, are, and again the discoveries that were made. So with those three, they have made to demarcate three stages of uh, development of development or Stone Age. So number one is this early Stone Age. Number one, the early Stone Age. Number two, or the second division is the Middle Stone Age and the other one is the late stone age or the new stone age. So those are three are the three divisions of the uh, stone age. So early stone age, let's look at it, the early stone age. So this period is also known as the old stone age or the Paleolithic. Paleolithic. So the term Paleolithic is made from Paleo, Paleo. Uh, which means odd, and lithos, which means stone. 
So during this stage of the old stone age, Paleolithic, the people were wanderers and they lived by hunting or gathering fruits and digging up edible roots for food. So you have to uh, know this one to take note of what were uh, uh, the people doing uh, in the Paleolithic age. They were just wanderers. They were moving from here to day, there, tomorrow, never coming back. They did not have a specific home. They were, they were in transit now and again. They did not have a home to say, ah, this is their home. No, they were keep. They kept on moving from here, there, there, there. Uh, if by chance they come again at the same place, it was just in transit, going to the other direction again. So they were in transit. They were hunting. They were gathering fruits and they were digging at edible fruits or edible roots. So they uh, used simple stone tools and sticks. So they were using simple stone tools and sticks during the early stone age. So early humans like, liked living in river valleys. So these people, they were living uh, maybe in or moving in river valleys. So these were places where they could obtain their needs, such as water, they could get their food, they could get also pebbles or stones for making the tools because it was the, the stone age. So people, uh, one important development during this one was the, the hand axe. So you have to know that the hand axe was discovered in the uh, early stone age. So it was used for different purposes, including digging the roots, cutting, cutting and skinning the animals. So they were using uh, those that hand axe that was uh, made from stones and they were using it for digging the roots uh, for food and again uh, cutting and as well as uh, skinning the animals. So for thousands of years no effort was made to improve uh, the tools. So the tools that they were using they were used for quite a long time. I understand they were the people who had a very small brain maybe uh, they could not uh, improve their uh, mistakes. So they were just doing the same things now and again. Another division of development or stone age is uh, the middle uh, stone age. So during this period, skills uh, of human beings were advanced. At middle age, skills now were advanced. So this period was also referred to as Methylithic. The Old Stone Age, we have said it was Paleolithic. And the Middle Stone Age, it was called the Mesolithic. Mesolithic. And uh, the term Meso, it means middle. And Lithos, stone. So Metho, Metho, uh, Mesolithic. Mesolithic. Their tools were made uh, were more complicated and specialized than those of the early Stone Age. So, uh, during the Middle Stone Age, now they improved. They improved those uh, tools, and they were more complicated and specialized. By specialized, we mean that uh, the tools that were for digging, they were special for digging. The tools that were used for uh, skinning animals, they were special for skinning the animals. Things like those. So they specialized. Uh, this time, each tool had its particular function, just as they mentioned. So they made stone tools and implements such as the chisels, the chisels, the knives, and the flex. So they were using uh, all those tools, uh, the simple tools, uh, for different purposes. So you have to know and uh, master this one to say they, uh, during the Middle Stone Age, they had particular tools for particular function. Another important discovery during this period was the use of fire. So here, that's where you need to be very clever. What was the most important discovery during the uh, uh, old Stone Age? It was the, it was what? I hope you, uh, you named it uh, correctly, correctly there. But here we are talking of fire. It was fire that was in the uh, middle uh, stone age, in the middle stone age. So fire had been uh, there even before the people had learned uh, its use. So fire was there, but the use of it, it started in 
uh, the Middle Stone Age, which means in the Old Stone Age, uh, there most uh, their discovery that they clinged to it was the what did you mention? The hand axe. So uh, the hand axe, they emphasized on the use of the hand axe. But in the Middle Stone Age, now apart from the hand axe, now they added the fire. So fire, uh, in the Old Stone Age, it was there, but they did not know its use. Only in the Middle uh, Stone Age, that's where they started to use it. So it sometimes started due to volcanic eruptions or when they uh, worked with the stones. So when they were working with stones, they could see the fire uh, coming out. Then they started to uh, take use or make use of it. They made fire by rubbing the two dry sticks vigorously against one another. So sometimes they could uh, rub the sticks against uh, one another, then they could produce uh, the fire. So friction would cause heat eventually, uh, that fire that was caused. So, uh, however, knowledge of fire in Africa began later than other parts of the world because of the warmer climate hence there was less lesser need for uh, less need for the warmth so we are seeing that when people were spread in different parts of the world uh, somewhere they started using fire but not in africa in africa uh, it was later that's when they started uh, using the fire so the discovery of fire greatly improved people's lives that just as it is today without fire i don't know whether uh, you can live happily because every day you have to use the fire in in all its forms so it was used to roast meat to keep uh, them warm uh, sometimes even to drive away the wild animals and to, to clear the caves so remember at this period people when they were living in groups they were able uh, to live in caves they are living in caves so those caves maybe there were a lot of things the snakes the bats and the like therefore they could uh, 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 remove those things by uh, heating or putting fire in the caves so that those things they die out or maybe they run away then they occupy that space Life for once, because of fire, was made comfortable. Just as uh, when the world has discovered something, uh, life is somehow comfortable. For example, when uh, maybe people uh, discovered the use of uh, the engine now uh, during the Industrial Revolution, that one, uh, that one, it eased, it made life comfortable because from the engine now we are able uh, to uh, make uh, the cars, they are make, able to make the aeroplanes and the like. So with that, then life is comfortable. So when they uh, discovered fire, life now started to uh, improve greatly. So it was during this period, the Mesolithic age, that uh, people learned the use of traps, such as the, the pit traps. So uh, they also started to use uh, the traps to catch the animals. So they were using even the traps or the pit traps so by a pit trap we mean they would dig uh, uh, a hole a hole there and put some sticks sharp sticks there inserted there inside it and on top they covered with the the, uh, the tree leaves so they could dig uh, like we dig uh, the pit rat lean so they could dig that pit very long and inside there they could put uh, sharp sticks pointing upwards and cover on top of that pit a long or a deep pit so they could cover it with a uh, with a grass so uh, it could uh, look something like to say a pit uh, is dug somewhere very deep then what they could do now is uh, they could cover on top they could cover the top here with the tree leaves here, here on top. So, and inside here, they could put a uh, sharp, the sharp sticks uh, pointing upwards. And they could maybe go somewhere and start maybe chasing the animals, start chasing the animals from that direction. Now, the animals, when they were running, when here, they could not know that here there is a pit. And when 
uh, they step on the tree leaves, they could immediately fall into uh, into into the pit, and they met there the sharp sticks, and they were pierced and died instantly. So that was the way of uh, making the trap. So we say in the Mesolithic age, they learned how to use the traps. So animals could fall inside there and be killed. So they used the skins as clothing and carrier bags. So they could use uh, the skins as carrier bags or as well as for their clothing. Then uh, the other division was the Late Stone Age. The Late Stone Age. So this period is also known as the New Stone Age or Neolithic. Neolithic. Neo for new and lithos for stone. So the New Stone Age was characterized by an improvement in uh, the life of people. So tools became sharper, lighter, and easier to handle. So during the Late Stone Age, people were making uh, lighter and uh, easier, easier, or maybe the sharper things that they were using. So people made and used bows and arrows. So this time around, they were using bows and arrows. So uh, again, farming began in Southwest Asia. So farming also started during the New Stone Age. So wild animals were captured and kept uh, captive for some time until they became docile. So they also uh, started to tame animals. They were going into the wild, maybe catch some buffaloes and put them there uh, in the cages for some time, just feed them until they became docile and they uh, were now used as home animals. So uh, most of the animals that you, we see today as if they are home animals, at one point in time, they were just wild animals. People, they grabbed them, put them in cages, and they fed them for some time until they were used, just as it is evidenced today. You find that someone can go into the wilderness, they do catch the lions there, they feed them, and those lions, they are used to them. They can uh, live with those uh, uh, lions. Those lions are used to people. So that's how uh, we came to term those dogs that we have. Uh, those uh, uh, sheep, uh, the cow, or the cattle, or the goats, and all those uh, animals that we rear now, they were once the wild animals. So this probably, uh, this is probably how people began to tame animals, such as cattle, goats, uh, dogs, chicken, and the like. So uh, that is it. They uh, got them from the wilderness. They began to grow plants such as sorghum and millet, and uh, they were using all these things, millet, they were uh, growing such crops. So because of uh, because food became abundant, there was no need for them to wander about to be moving in search for food. So they stayed. Uh, they began to settle at a place uh, for a longer uh, period to look after their uh, their crops. So for the first time, then farming communities they developed. So farming communities started to appear, and this was the beginning of era civilization so people now began to come together and live together share ideas for the common good and they were living as a community and that one uh, we call it civilization so from asia the idea of farming spread to north eastern africa along the river nile banks so we see to it that uh, farming started with uh, from western asia then those ideas came to uh, North Africa along the Nile banks. So as climate became warm in the highlands above the Nile uh, River, uh, or the Nile River became drier. Uh, that is to say, we are saying the highlands above the Nile River, those areas, they became drier and the upland farmers now were forced to uh, settle along the river banks of the Nile, uh, Nile River. So when the people were settling in the uh, highlands of the Nile River, and when those places were becoming drier, they were going down uh, to look for water in the Nile River, and they settled there, 
eventually they started farming along the river banks. Now, uh, by and by, the issue of government started to appear now. The issue of governance started to appear. So new communities, as they were living together, they called for the need to maintain law and order and control of trade because they were trading sometimes, exchanging of goods. So naturally, those who were uh, strong and wise enough emerged as leaders. So those strong people in those communities, they began to be respected as their leaders. So in most cases, the leader would be succeeded by his son. So they believed that if I am strong, I am going to produce a strong son. Therefore, if I die, my son become the leader if I was the leader. So eventually, it led to the development of the dynasty or the line of rulers. So this led to the rise of the idea of governance and kingdom. So we see to it that as people were settling together, there was need to maintain law and order. Then some of the, the strong people, they emerged as rulers, as leaders. And uh, those leaders, they were leaving leadership into their sons after they die. Then they created what we call a dynasty or a line of rulers. And that one, it created the uh, kingdom, which was realized by to say, all right, there is a line of so-so people there. Uh, uh, it was just like that. Then uh, the idea of religion, we have also uh, to mention of it. Uh, it also emerged. So with the, the developed brains, humans or human beings became so inquisitive just as the children are to say, ah, what about this? What about this? What about this? So that is just the nature of people. It's, it just shows the nature of people. People are so inquisitive. They want to know more. What about this? What about this? If they say, uh, don't do this, why should I not do this like that? So the need to answer the certain life's questions, such as death, natural calamities like the floods, uh, the droughts, epidemics, those things, they led to the emergence of the common beliefs about a god or the gods in order to explain the occurrences. So when they could see things like the floods, People dying, why, why do good people die? Why? Uh, uh, the droughts, epidemics, why these diseases? Therefore, they came into conclusion that there must be a certain God, the controller or the creator uh, who uh, controls uh, everything that occurs. Another thing is the, the industry. Industry, uh, we have also uh, to mention industry among the people as they settled together so now that they could no longer wander or move from one place to uh, the other uh, the people began to learn new skills so they were learning those new skills like weaving the baskets building uh, the granaries or the uh, the grinding places or maybe the places of uh, producing something or pottery, they could start making pots or making bowls and many others. So they started their simple industries whereby they were producing those things to ease their lives in their communities. So these skills were handed down to the succeeding generations and improved uh, on with time. So most of the things that we are using today, they are the things that uh, were started just very simple, very simple, and later on in the uh, subsequent generations, then they were improving. Now and again, they were improving. Then trade has also to be mentioned. Trade, we have to mention this one. So those who had surplus pots, baskets, or crops, or animals, or animal skins, uh, exchanged with what they did not have. Therefore, they started exchanging uh, uh, with others on the things that they did not have. So this system of exchanging goods for goods is called what? Butter, butter system. The butter system is whereby I have bananas and you have potatoes, but I don't have potatoes, you don't have bananas. Then I'll share you 
the part of my bananas you share me part of your potatoes then you have what i have and i have what you have that is butter system So to this far, we have come to the end of this topic, whereby we have looked at the two issues, time in history and the origins of people. So we have looked at a number of things. So we have seen how uh, things are, uh, are done, or especially in time, how we measure time in history, how every, or the importance of time or charts in history, we have looked at that, and the origins of people. We have looked at the theories, the two theories. The first theory, you remember, evolution theory, or uh, the other one is the creation uh, theory on how people are, or we believe that the origins of people either were created or the other one is uh, they, were, they evolved from uh, some other forms of living creatures. So here are the questions that you need to uh, handle. Uh, do these questions for me. So uh, number one is state, state the reasons why a date is important in history. And again, the other one, state the uh, proper centuries for each of the following years. So these are the years, uh, study them properly and uh, give me uh, the centuries. What are the centuries for these years? And give the reason why Africa is regarded as the cradle of human beings. So uh, give the reason on that explain two theories of the origins of uh, human beings. You have to explain this one according to what you have learned so far. So the last one, explain the features that made historians uh, to name one of the, uh, uh, the, the hominids as uh, the skilled man. So you have to uh, answer those uh, uh, questions. So after you do that, what you are going to do is this. You are going to capture them using the WhatsApp. Uh, send the photo to me on the numbers that appear on the screen. So I will download, mark your questions, then I'll send the feedback to you. So uh, you have any question, you include onto the same, then we are going to assist each other uh, now and again. So uh, this is a, a wonderful uh, topic that we have looked at. So next time, The next time uh, when we meet again, we are going to proceed. And uh, this time around, we are going to look at the growth of ancient uh, civilization. So we'll start with uh, Egypt, Egypt in Africa. So uh, we have looked at uh, the people now started living together as a civilization. So how did those civilizations grow? So be there next time. Until next time, thank you so much for making this wonderful choice. Thank you. Mm -hmm.